Down your mouth, but we could bump it out to the house. Green. Have it your way by DK, yeah. But you better be strapped up and ready for the gameplay. Cause when we step on the field, bro, it's go time. So the yard TD the Willie Clutch for Wiggy Dime. Or maybe it feels like hitting mac and cheese on the post, or maybe Daily Holder on a hit and go. Green. Up the middle with the war horse, a little taste of T Roy for the main course. Yeah, and I ain't even talked about the weight. One of the best in the league when it comes to takeaways. The boats in the back and the middle's locked down. Here's yeah. another sack for Sir around the Nate Brown. When you all put your head up, yeah. The situation, man, it could change up. Yeah. The enemy, he always trying to play us. Cause he know deep inside he can't fade us. We royalty. Best believe we royalty. For real. We royalty. Best believe we royalty, yeah. Walk, put your head up. Yeah, the situation, man, it can change up. What's up, SFL Nation? Welcome back to yeah. SFL Nights with AJ Stryker. Thank you so much for joining me today and tonight or whenever you decide to hit that play button or turn on that radio dial. Really appreciate it, y'all. And I have my good pen here with me, Mr. Gene Valentine. He is a wide receiver for the Portland Fleet. And it has been um, many moons since you've been on the show, the show, sir. What's been going on with you? I've been good. I've been chilling, enjoying my career in Portland. Good. Number one wide receiver, you know. That's right. That's right. And you've been in the league for a long time, like five seasons. Yes, five seasons. I'm no longer a rookie. There's no more excuses. <laughs> There's no more crying. <laughs> so you get out there and drop that ball, man. You, you running laps. Oh, no. They I, know still have, I still have the hands of the gods out there. I'm maxed out. So you like this all state, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm maxed out. You gotta you gotta check in, you gotta do your progressions. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. Now, to that point, so first off, because it has been a while since you've been on the show, Gene, you've had a whole bunch of new people that joined that want to get to know the different uh, community members. So the start from the beginning. Give us your hometown, your interesting, an interesting fact about yourself and your favorite NFL team. Okay. Well, my name is Gene Valentine from Don't Go Have Haiti. Well, Force Your Haiti. Live in Brooklyn, New York. An interesting fact about that I'm a Renaissance man. I don't like to stick to, I don't like to just learning one thing. I like to learn it all. I guess you kind of want to say I want to know it all. But I don't want to act like it. And my favorite football team is the Washington football. Okay. This could be the Redskins. Okay. Well, I'm going to see, you know, that that whole name change, you know, had to to happen. My favorite player is the ball, Aaron. Why? One of the strongest, fastest linebackers I've seen that beat the cup. Okay. So, why weren't you a linebacker? Why did you choose wide receiver? Well, if it wasn't going to be low bar, it was going to be Clinton Portis. Uh, wide receiver, I do have. There was this one guy called Cole. Something Cole. Number 80. Number 80. And then when it was Cole and Santana Moss during the season. Mm-hmm. 
cold one when I'm by. He was about six foot, 180 maybe. He was a bad man. Brown skin like you. And mm-hmm. there were Santana moms, dark skin like me, little browner than me. They were bad. Like two, six foot, not that tall wide right receiver. Speed, strength, accuracy, agility. And I was impressed. All they needed was Tom Brady. But you know, if you're not in sync and you don't have chemistry, it doesn't matter who you have. Very true. You can have all the ingredients in the world. If you don't follow the steps, now what do you have? Nothing. Yeah, but a waste of time. And yeah. an angry ball club. Okay, angry fan base. <laughs> Let me, give me a second. Let me see who. I forgot his first name. Who's his name? Okay. His name. I forgot his name. I should know his name. I wanted his jersey so bad. Give me one second while we. That's fine. I will see who that is. Hey Google. Colds for Washington Redskins, two thousand. Opening Colds. You don't get it. I'll try that again. Cold Washington. Cold Washington Redskins, two thousands. Showing pictures that match. Ah. Maybe I should type it in. Maybe. I will Until- find it. He was bad. I'm surprised you don't know him. I mean, I I probably would know his face. Oh, maybe when you say the whole name, then I'll probably, probably ring a bell, but. I'm gonna ask a couple But why are you looking that up, though? Yeah, what go ahead. What made you decide to join the SFL in the first place? Well, I'm a big athlete, uh, big, uh, big fan of the sport, football, mm-hmm. you know. You know, I was watching Pluto TV and uh, I, I, I saw a game of Viva. No, it was a game between, um, what's that team? Seattle. The Seattle, Seattle Skyhawks? I mean, uh, Seattle uh, Tyrants, Tyrants at the time? Yes. Tyrants. And some pharaohs, something like that. And the New Orleans pharaohs. New Orleans. Yeah, that. This was before Louisiana's time. Right. And uh, my favorite player was BDG Hollywood and Sudo Nakai. Awesome. And I would watch. And then one day they said, if you want to join the SFLM, I mean the SFL, the SFL, you want to make an impact. It said something crazy. And I said, I want to make an impact. And then by that bang, I saved my piggy big change. Next thing you know, <laughs> I'm meeting Ashley Jackson. Hey, man. My favorite you quarterbacks. <laughs> you're pretty <laughs> good. You're, you're a pretty good quarterback. I just wish you had like some more help. Because I, I see the I see I see the the arm, I see the accuracy. But you know, live by the gun and die by the gun. That's it. That's it. And, Listen, and I, I came. You had a game you was winning, Ashley, and your running back got hurt. Yeah, DJ. And and, and I was like, Dad. <laughs> and it, they had bump coverage, and they had they had the hands. I was I was like, no. Nah. I've seen some losses. I was mad for you. <laughs> but I've seen some wins. I've seen some blowout wins. Mm-hmm. I've seen mm-hmm. playoffs too, actually. So I've been watching. I appreciate it, then. And it has not come without... I mean, when you when you are the leader of any kind of group, you got to mm-hmm. be able to have the tough shoulders 
to be able to weather the storms when you when you plan good and when everything working out for you then hey it's, it's all good but you got to be able yeah. to take it when people are telling you hey you know you, you threw like five interceptions that game you know or you know you couldn't convert third down to save your life this game i don't know what's, what's going on you guys you know so mm -hmm. it's it's all about how you learn it and how you, you grow from the things the losses the mistakes you make. You know. Well, football is a mind game, you know. Mm. And it's chess. supposed to, yeah. It's supposed to when when you when you in a room with a bunch of great minds and a bunch of people that have special abilities, it takes it takes a lot of effort to get them to to organize and network as as one unit. Because mm -hmm. people, everybody wants to be the reason that we won the championship, and everybody wants to make a difference. Everybody right. wants to be remembered. In that room alone, every nook and cranny wants to have their name on record saying I had something to do with this championship. And I value that. But at the same time, you have to know, with, I mean, this is assembly. I mean, that's what plays are. Plays are assembly. It's a situation. I mean, as a seminar, you have to analyze. Preview, you have to preview, you have to outro, intro. Know? And um, when everybody's a star, it's not, it's not just throwing the ball no more. Right. It's not just running down the line no more, down the center. You have to have tactics. You have to have strategy, you know? Mm -hmm. Because you're going against d backs that got ball hawk, bump coverage, run coverage. Jumping ability, um, the, the 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 catching, the, the the catching, the loose ball catching, yeah, closing speed, big hit, man, you guys are in danger, and you're in danger because the defensive tackles are they got gold rush, right. and and you guys don't have a offensive line like that. So I understand instead of complaining saying oh, no, 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 but I know. I try to see what the problem is most of the time. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Most of the time, the problem is where you tend to spend your points. If you're mm -hmm. concentrating on getting all of these high value and or these animations period, whether it's high value or low value, you have to make sure that your core the, the, the core of what makes your player its best is at its full capability first before you add anything else to um, what's the word? enhance that because mm -hmm. let's say if you let's say you're wide receiver right and you're working on everything else you real speedy you know you can get there to the ball but you ain't been working on your catch so mm -hmm. you get there real fast but you ain't catching a damn thing <laughs> so yeah. like what's the point and then you put something else on there you know, you put in animations and stuff and building on that, but you still can't catch, bro. So like, mm -hmm. it's just about that's, where and how you that, do it. That's, that's the big dilemma I had as a wide receiver. Um, when I could catch, I wasn't fast. Mm -hmm. And when I was fast, I could not catch. Mm -hmm. I had to pick a neutral zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. It took me about, let me see. It took me about five years to control my speed. It took me about five years to control five my strength. Mm -hmm. About five years to control my agility. All those things take time. That is frustrating. You have to wait for the muscle. You have to stretch it. You have to talk to the hands. <laughs> Everything takes time. Like a good home cooked meal. So I do know. Even in the game itself, you have what was what's that special ability called? The one where you, deep deep catcher. Deep, yeah, deep threat. Deep threat, deep threat. Mm -hmm. That means they're supposed to have good hands, but they're not that tall. They're just fast, but their hands are not that good. The ones with deep threats are most likely gonna catch it deep, but the short passes they're gonna have problems. Yeah. And the ones then the ones that have the catching, um, I forgot what that one is called. Um, possession receiver. That one they have the hands of blue. Like whatever you throw at them, they catching it, Ashley. 
But the deep pass, instead of having three drop steps to get it to them on a deep pass, you're going to need at least one more step, two more steps, which is going to be two more seconds. To be honest with you, I mean, I'm not saying I'm a quarterback. You as a quarterback. But I learned as a street quarterback, time is of essence. A quick slant, I have one second. Mm-hmm. On an empty back, I have about three seconds to about seven seconds. Mm-hmm. In a shotgun, the most I have is five seconds. Yes. Do you know how I count my seconds? About how yes. many receivers I got. If I have three wideouts, I have three seconds. I have a second to look at you on your cut. I have a second to look at you on your cut. I have a second to look at you on your cut. Right? That's right. Usually, rarely do I make it to the third receiver on the same on the same play. Because the D-backs are fast and the defensive tackles are fast and the defense yeah. are in the fast. And the linebackers are hot. And the free safeties are waiting. It's almost impossible to be a quarterback. Almost impossible. But hard work pays off. Yeah. And when you have the right pieces around. Yes. They're going to make those plays. People that's going to, yes. People that's that's going to. People that's going to join you in movement. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you got the seven step drop back. As long as my O line is protecting me, which I have a pretty good O line. I have three. I would love to have a couple more. If Cam, you know, expands the roster as far as. For you and Moses. Right. For us. And then I have, you know, Tariano as my fullback. So he's running, helping with the blocks and everything too. So, you know, I do have a lot more time. And time, like you said, is important. It's definitely important. And when you have the time to make better decisions, then I can throw deep. But then when you are known for throwing, they're going to be prepared for it. So, yeah, that's why I have some interceptions because I know I'm not getting ready to stop throwing. Yeah, I feel like Oprah sometimes. Hey, you get a ball. You get a ball. You get a ball. But as long as I win, I mean, I know that's going to come. After you get two wins, five wins, seven wins, ten wins, eleven and one, twelve and zero, oh, and you lose, the next plan is get the championship. No matter how many wins you get after that, it could. Mm-hmm. I'd rather take the seven, the seven and five, and win the championship all day. I think mm-hmm. it's about time you guys win that championship. You guys have the perfect team in Arizona. Eddie, Eddie, you guys started really good. Yeah. You got, you got Hunter Norwood. I think you guys, yeah, you guys got, then you guys have Bob Funk, my friend over there. Wasn't that last Shaman? season? Who? Cool. Which one? Oh, uh, Shad Allen? Uh, uh, Al- is it Bob yeah. Funk or Shad Allen? Shad Allen. Shad Allen. The strong, the strong safety. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, we had shot Allen over there. Everything is on your side, Ashley. You just missing one little thing. What's that? Oh, if I knew, I'd be Ashley Jackson. <laughs> I watched the game. We'll all get the it time. together, man. Remember the last time I told you what you was missing was the fullback? Well, you got the fullback, but then the new problem happened. You had three blockers. Something missing. I don't know. Um. You know, maybe you should try possession football. Come to think about. You know, old West Coast possession football, yard mm-hmm. by yard grinding. Yeah. You still know how to grind. I figure your receivers won't get tired, you won't get tired. That's interception. I'm not saying be like Atlanta and with BDG and do that 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 toss to the side, but Get a five yarder. I'm talking about having some five yarders, some ten yarders, and fifteen yarders. Uh, the last four seasons I've been watching you. Uh, can I be honest? Yeah. I hate to be honest to a beautiful lady. Okay. I'd rather you be honest. <laughs> okay, I'll be honest. 
Well, I'm a guy. I'm not supposed to be honest, but I'll try. But I've been watching your career for five years, and you're a 15 yard quarterback. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I think a possession football, possession football is like the best key when because we are we doing all um, all of fame mode. Mm-hmm. There's got to be possession football. I've never won a game in all Madden. As as Tom Brady going for 15 yards, I've never won an All Madden game as as Matt Ryan, but I've won as Tom Brady, mm-hmm. short yardage, medium yardage, and long yardage, and I've won as Joe Montana, short yardage, medium yardage, and long yardage. I've won as Steve Young. Um, who else? But I, I think that those are uh, Russell Wilson. But Russell Wilson does more 15 yarders too. See, there's no chance in life. Everything you get what you work for. Mm-hmm. If you work hard, you're going to get paid. Indeed. Absolutely. And if you're lazy, and if you're lazy, you're going to get poverty. That's it. You know? And it is about change. It is about recognizing what you do well and what you can work on. Now, yeah. when you say 15 yards, a 15 yeah. yarder, maybe I would give myself a little bit more than that because I do pass the ball a whole lot more than that. And I do I make a lot say, more completions I should, than that. I should say 15 that. plus. But I'm talking yeah. about the- but I mean, if you're talking about averaging, if you're talking yeah. about averaging, I would even give myself a little bit more than that. But like I said, this is your opinion, and I value that, and I appreciate that. No, no, um, no, no. I'm not saying this. What I'm saying is, you do get those big plays off, but when the game comes down to the line, you get by the um, the red zone, the 20 yard line, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and and the space is short. The 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 room the room is short. It's only 20 yards. You, right. It's stacked up. You got you got three linebackers. You got mm-hmm. two defensive tackles, two defensive end, two defensive backs, free safety and strong safety. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be hard to get a pass call if those guys are not accurate. Right. Which and, why I always frown upon myself or really any quarterback that feels really confident in throwing in the red zone because you that is a very important area. Now, if you have no choice, then that's that's what you give you. If you third down and you got to throw, then that's what it is. But I even okay. agree with that. Like red zone, you have to be more careful. And I have thrown interceptions in the red zone when we're at third and freaking five. And yeah, all I have to do is just run it. But I'm not that, saying you bad. I, no, I know. I'm not saying to what I know is somebody led the league in touchdowns. It just so happens they also led in interceptions. Interceptions no? too, right? All I'm saying is I just don't want what happened to Vancouver to happen to you because Vancouver is a 15 plus yard team too, and they have all the receivers, but they just not strong enough. Mm-hmm. See, you want you can't just have speed. You can't just have power, and you can't just have agility. Look at Baltimore. They gave you three different styles. Mm-hmm. They gave you Jimmy Hazard, speed, right? Mm-hmm. They gave you great gains, mm-hmm. power, and now they gave you Murray, power again. They won with speed, they won with strength, and they won with medium strength. But they also have a 6'6 wide receiver that's maxed out. They also have Shima who's maxed out. Mm-hmm. They also have a tight end that's maxed out. They also have the best defensive backs maxed out. They also have the best linebackers. The best front seven. But they go yard by yard is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Whether they got a speed running back, whether they got a power running back, or a medium built running back, they go yard by yard. That's all I, because he throws the ball to Shima. 
Mm-hmm. He, he throws it to uh, Ivy Irvin. But they also run the ball. Right. And he is not the fastest. That's yeah, but you I can't. Was, right. You have to be multi. To and you're right. You have to be multi dimensional. You can't. People will prepare for you. If you watch the paying attention to the SFLN, when. You know, Annapolis was using Randy, utilizing Randy Squarebush too much. People were prepared for that. And so if, if a team is known for the run game or known for the pass game and you don't change it up, then of course you're not going to be as effective because people are going to know what you're going to do. Just like Sioux Falls was known for the run game for a long time. Now, with you being so, um, you, you studied obviously teams and the way they move and everything. What I do you watch. think? Por- right, and 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 that's good, and I can tell that you do. But what do you think Portland has to do to get over the hump that they currently find themselves in? Well, Portland, Portland is a great team, um, full of great players, uh, great staff. Uh, I think, uh, I, I guess, just gotta keep grinding. People just have to stay. And, and believe in the system. Uh, so far, people are coming and going. You know, I think if we had the same team we had uh, four seasons ago or three seasons ago, even when Zeke just got there, Zeke Your Love just got there, he could have won a championship. You know, it's just got to stay because the progression, it's not just the one season thing. Mm-hmm. Got to be consistent. It's just mm-hmm. like checking in in the SFLM. You got to keep, because if you don't, you just, I, some people, you just got to hold on. Because things, cooking a Thanksgiving turkey takes, it could take 24 hours. It could take 16, 16 games. It could take, it could take six seasons. It could take, it could take two seasons. And sometimes it could take one season to win a championship. So cooking takes a lot of hours. It's going to be a lot of hits to the face, a lot of hits to the groin, a lot of disrespectful words. But you got to hold on. Mm-hmm. If that little seed I planted under the earth gave up, I wouldn't have had nothing to eat. Mm-hmm. You got to keep fighting and keep pushing. Portland just got to keep fighting and keep pushing. You know, find some guys that want to stay and believe in the system. Right. I think that's. The I key. don't just. Yeah, I don't just want to be a star because I'm already a star. I'm. A, I've been a star since the SFLM. I've been a star since a rookie. I can't wait to get a job done, which was bring Portland a championship. If I feel like I can't do that, then I'm gonna feel sad. You know? Okay. But it's not all love on my shoulders. It's everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a team. You know, it's a team effort. It's it's a team thing. And the thing is, your coaches work really hard um, to get these game plans together, to sim countless games to try to see what works and try to prepare for the other 6,000 possible plays that the other team is going to throw their way. Um, so it is about being patient when you're a player. Um, but on the other hand, as a owner and as a coach, you also have to understand that these players are paying money to see themselves be effective on the field, to see them, their teams have good seasons to, to be in that winner circle. Everybody wants to feel that. So you do have to make sure as an owner or as a coach that you are providing the best experience possible. Because these people are paying very good money to to, to participate. And yeah, it's got to be fun. It's got to be fun. Right. Right. Yeah, but actually, I wasn't trying to disrespect your quarterback skills. I, I just wanted to say it's not It's like impossible to be a quarterback on Hall of Fame mode. Because there's a linebacker. There's a 6'5 line, inside linebacker that knows mm-hmm. all 32 teams' offensive playbook. Right. 
He's going to end up with at least two two interceptions and about five pass deflections. And about three sacks. You know, if, <laughs> if someone, if someone is upset at Gene Valentine. No, no, I'm serious though. But it's, it's really not. difficult. It's really no. difficult to be a quarterback on Hall of Fame last year. It is. And it is. So, so one thing about me is that I am, I recognize the mistakes that my player makes. And I'm not the type of person that's just going to be like, okay, I overlook them. So by you telling me that, I didn't take offense to that. And, you know, if anything, I'll pay attention to it. But then, as I told you, I respectfully disagree. I think that I have a little bit more. My I average more, but that doesn't mean that I'm mad at you. It doesn't mean that I have no. You're the best. Any issue. No, you're the best. No, I you just good? told you I'm still a fan. No, you're the best. <laughs> I just told you I was watching you. I remember you was telling me uh, how lucky I was to get drafted because I didn't have it got to uh, bank in points so I could make my player upgrade better. I remember mm-hmm. you wasn't as fortunate. Remember mm-hmm. you was telling me that. So I know how what you went through. I didn't go. Th- I know what you went through was much more tremendous than what I went through. Mm-hmm. It's just me, you know. It's been five years. I really won a championship, and I do want it with Portland. But hey, you know it's not easy. Guys, no. guys, guys are coming and going, and it's getting tough on the coaching staff to make a game plan. You know, it's just and and. If you're not happy, the ship is going to sink. That's right. And I don't want that to happen. Uh, We have lost great players. But you got to trust Mel, just like they got me. And you got to trust Jacob. You got to trust Nelson. I'm sure they're going to think of something. They will. Y'all going to be all right, man. Y'all going to be all right. And I think everybody just needs to take a step back and just kind of re-eva- reevaluate, see what works, what doesn't, and just, and, and you know, do the best that you can with what you got. You ah, know? But they got a lot of stuff to work with. And I don't want, it's, I'm not getting my hands in there. I, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to show up to the film room and see what we <laughs> can do and get my one and twos maybe. But I'm not, it's, it's, it's a tough situation in Portland. And they they working hard on things, and I congratulate them on you know and getting players. And I just hope that the players that we get stay. That's all I'm saying. I hope they stay. Yeah, and I think when they look at these kind of shows and when they see their owners and different players on their representing and and letting people kind of like talking up the team and everything, I think that people will, you know. It'll, it'll kind of bring up the camaraderie and things like that, you know. But um, I wish you the best of luck, T. Um, and, hey, it's season 19, man. It's, 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 it's an open book of possibilities. You never know what could happen. So, okay. you know. Ashley, I got one thing to say. What's that? The Arizona Scorpions. Okay. You're not that far away. Right. The Portland fleet are not that far away. You know what? I'm going to say it here and now, me, me and Jane. The Arizona Scorpion versus the Portland fleet. Season 20 championship. Sounds good to me. Let's run it. Okay. All right, hey, Ashley. Y'all, y'all heard J- Jacob. Jacob, he's 20. You heard him. He's expecting to be in the championship, Jacob. Make it happen. We're going to be playing each other, apparently. Now, if this works, I'm going to need the lottery numbers, man, because, you know, times is hard. So, you know, I could definitely use them lotto numbers. Because if you guess this right, that would be <laughs> But look, Gene, man, it was a pleasure catching up with you. Please don't be a stranger. Maybe you can come on and help me host the show because I'm kind of like doing like a revolving guest thing. So if any of you want to kind of come on and talk about some of these games for season 19, let me know. I got you. But before I let you go, I'm going to give you a last word so that can be a shout out, a song or a poem that you want to do right now. The floor is yours. Okay. Uh, shout out to Mel Davis, Jacob Bouvet, and Nelson Lozano in Ezekiel Love. 
and all my brothers are Vandalay. I don't know, Chris Stack, Dak Majors, throwing up. I to, it's, the list is too long. <laughs> all right. But uh, shout out to Ashley Jackson. Shout out to Cam for giving me a chance to be a part of this movement. Uh, and uh, say what's up to Eddie for me. I mean, I'm sorry. Tell Eddie I say what up, though. Yep, there you go. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sure. good luck this season, Ashley. I'll be watching, and hopefully we'll see you in the playoffs. And thanks for having me on your show. Uh, you. You're the best. You are too, man. So I'm glad we catch up. I'm glad we caught up with each other, man, finally. And don't be a stranger. I'm always here, okay? Okay, thanks, Ashley. It means a lot to me. Anytime, brother. You be safe. All right, you too. Thanks. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome back to my fourth and goal interview featuring my good friend, Mr. Ramos Len from. He is the owner of Mexico City Aztecs. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic, actually. Uh, ready for this season to start. It's going to start, you know, we're, we're recording this on a Monday, barely. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's after dark right now. That's right. But, I mean, yeah. it's SFL nights. Why not record at night? You know? There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And, uh, but you know, just, you know, seven days for the season, for the um, convention. And uh, it will be exciting. It will be very, very exciting. It Thank you for me. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. You know, I had to catch up with you because you put an interesting fact in the general chat about Hall of Fame, right? Mm-hmm. How many members of the Mexico City Aztecs are actual Hall of Fame? Five, but um, like if you want to also include Mike Dax, Mike Dax is not even as a player. Like he's in as an SFL member, if that makes sense. He's in like as a contributor because of his broadcasting um, thing. So because he's a, like the guy on the research, and he's the director and everything. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's uh, it's myself as, as the owner. It's Matt Wilson as a quarterback. It's Cole Varner as the kicker. Now it's Jeffrey Dax finally making it in, and uh, and Ray Bentley. Um, yeah. So how does it feel? How does it feel? And technically, so proud. My dad does that does count because he is on the team and he's a very active member. Throw it to the tight end member of the team. Sure. So yeah, that there technically you go. that counts. Yeah. Yeah, in my opinion, he sh- he also should be in as a tight end. To me, he's the greatest tight end in, in SFL history. You know, my man Tiberius Bovine may say something about that, but to me, to me, it's to me, it's Mike Dax, honestly. If I can be biased, I I, th- I think I, I would have arguments to to, to back that up. <laughs> I bet you better because they come for you too. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. And, and we still, hey, you know, this is not say with your chest, but hey. Close enough. You remember of this, the Scorpions? We have Phoenix Jones on the pipeline. You know, that's hey, I'm just saying. Right. So, and I know that makes you feel good, you know. So, how do you cultivate players to be such, to make such an impact? Um, what do you think is most important in order to be a Hall of Famer? You have to be a great unselfish kind of player in my opinion we i think we've done a great job at just getting guys who you know are not only great players but they are willing to you know be be team players you know what i'm saying like when we drafted phoenix jones i've said this multiple times and i'll keep saying it but when we drafted him uh season 14 uh it was when the when the draft was held in massachusetts live um he attended that uh, draft. I remember. Uh, he back in the day, um, you know, it was based off on progressions. We didn't have the SFLM back in those days, but rookies still progressed during the offseason leading to the draft. And he only had six progressions, while some people had like twenty-five. But we had conversations with him. The fact that he went to the draft live. Uh, just really meant a lot to us. Like he was, you know, all in 
And every conversation that, that we had with him was just fantastic. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, we asked him, hey, would you play the end, defensive end? Would you play this? Would you play that? And he was, yes, yes, yes. I will do anything for the team. And then during the draft, I messaged him and I was like, hey, how, how does that full, how does fullback sound? You know, um, here you will be obviously blocking, every, you know, for Ray Bentley. But we will use you basically as running back too. We will throw the ball to you. We will run the ball with you. Um, it's, it's, you're going to be busy on that offense. And he was like, yeah, sure. I'll be down for that. So pick 16 comes along. We drafted him. And it's been great since. Um, and, and same goes with everything. With every, pretty much everybody we, we have drafted, honestly. You know, even if they left the team, you know, they've done a, such a great impact for us. You know, recently the Meerkats come to mind, for example. Uh, now they play in Minnesota, but, you know, for, for this one season, they were terrific for us. Um, you know, in the locker room, they were fantastic. We can talk about Dan Tritz, another guy who's in the pipeline for Hall of Famer. As far as I'm concerned, he's a back-to-back-to-back all-star in his first three seasons, uh, doing a great job. And, and, and I think it's just cultivate that from the very beginning in the locker room and, and just that longevity that they, they, they've had uh, with a team or coming from other teams. You know, Jeffrey Dax started his career in London. Uh, Mike Dax started his career in Queen City. Just com- coming, coming to us and, and just, you know, we've, I think we've done a really good job of knowing how to use them, right? And, and, and use them of, of their best of abilities. Uh, I remember in Say It With Your Chest, um, Somebody asked, hey, um, how would you consider or, or does it mean to you, for example, height and weight and the build of a player? And yeah, that, 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 that matters. But you know what? Jeffrey Dax is 5'10", 200 pounds. Well, most safeties are like 6'3", 6'2". He's 5'10", 200 some. And again, as far as I'm concerned, he's probably the best free safety the league has seen. Uh, Giovanni Bolt is right there with him. Um, but... You know he's he's great the way he's progressed the way we we kind of use him on the um on the defense and in, in kickoff returns it's it's been great to your point you know when you are creating a player right because i'll go ahead and say it i've been told that my quarterback pretty much won't it's probably least likely to see a championship win because of the way I built her. Now, my stats are almost maxed out. The mm-hmm. issue seemingly was the height. How, how tall? Yes. So my question is, does that really matter? Does the height and weight of a player matter in a simulation? Definitely on the field, in real life. Yeah. But in a yeah. simulation, and, and if so... Is there a way that we can set, like it may be like a guidelines mm-hmm. for people that are new, so that they could build them in a manner so they won't be, so they can be affected. Right. What's your player's height? Let me ask that. Mm, oh, she's six three. That's totally fine. Like, the, 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 uh, like do they say it's like too short? Yes. That's crazy. Not and that's all. the reason well, that's part of this possibly one of the reasons why I throw so many interceptions. No, 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 no. Not at all. Not at all. No. Okay. No. You know, um, to answer your question, yes, it does matter. Okay. Yes, it does. However, there is no perfect height and weight for a player. It's not like a quarterback should be 6'6", 250 pounds, else he's going to be trash or she's going to be trash. No, it re- it depends on the type of offense and defense that you use and where that player is going to be situated on the field. 6-3 for a quarterback is, to, as far as I'm concerned, really good. You know, the, the problem maybe will start if a quarterback is 5-6. At that point, mm-hmm. it's like, you know, but 6-3 is more than tall enough, uh, I think, Back in the day, Skeletor Pifa, and I understand it's different eras of the SFL, I get mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. But I think Skeletor P. Funk for the old Louisville Wolfpack, I think he was six foot. And, and nobody beast. could stop him. Nobody could stop him. 
Uh, Nobody. Be, Throwing the ball, throwing the football. I'm not talking about Skelter P. Funk being like a scramble kind of guy. Gadget. No, no, no. He will throw the football for 400 yards and he will absolutely kill you. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Six yeah, I've four, studied. Like, it's perfectly fine. Perfectly yeah, fine. Okay. What else is this? And, and, and other, you know, for example, the end. Let's just call the end. The question, is he running, is the defense running a 3-4 or is it running a 4-3? A 3-4 defensive end is very different from a 4-3 DN. Let's say maybe for a 4-3 DN, what you were looking about, let's say 6-4, 265, 270 pounds. Mm-hmm. Let's just say for a 3-4 DN, that will be a little bit undersized. Um, a 3-4 DN should be closer to 300. Um, should be about 290 maybe. You know what I'm saying? Because right. the, the, the assignment is very different. In the 4-3 the defensive end is going to be sometimes on the outside shoulder of the right tackle so that it, it needs more speed to come around the edge right to right to the point of that. Mm-hmm. in the correct in the three four it will be normally situated behind the guard and the tackle gotcha because of that he needs to be stronger he needs to be bigger to contain those double team blocks and seal those gaps Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So yes. it's it, it's completely different. It's, it's different at a, a 4-3 D tackle, maybe a 3-4 D tackle 290 is perfect. 290 pounds for a 4-3 D tackle. If you want to have a nose guard, take a look at Dan Tritz, his 315. Take a look mm-hmm. at Alex Dominguez, he's about 310. He needs to be bigger, he needs to be buffer, he needs to cover a lot of space. Those double team blocks just contain that middle of the field. So it, it's just... Way different for a corner. Are you running press? Are you running zone? If it's press, maybe you want to be 6-2, 215 because you need to press the receivers. If you're running zone, you're perfectly fine. Honestly, 5-11 corners, like a lot of people shy away from them. Um, mm-hmm. they, they, they're like, man, you're under six foot. You, you, you're very small. Not really. If you run zone, you know, 5-11, 190 pounds. You're good. Liam Ryan for us is an example. You know, Liam Ryan, you know, who also is killing it in the minors. He had four mm-hmm. interceptions one game. <laughs> right. Yeah, he, he's killing it. And he's, he, but he, he's more of a zone corner. Okay. Now, for what you just told me, for those that don't are, that isn't already privy to the information, like coming in and just like, okay, I want to just be affected. Is mm-hmm. there a particular maybe guidelines or maybe they can kind of look to um, or maybe they should, is it, or is it recommended to talk to the SFLM coaches mm-hmm. and let them know what they're trying to do? And- Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It, it's my strong belief that players uh, should, should talk to coaches and vice versa because the coaches are there for a reason. And, The, and no one will know what they want to run offense and defensive better than the coach. So if it's like, hey, you're going to be a, a halfback for us and you're going to be mostly up between the tackles running back. Maybe in that case, you're going to make a power back. And maybe in that case, you're going to make yourself 6'1", 220 pounds. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, but you know what? We want to run a lot of stretch plays. We want to toss it to the halfback. We want to use us a receiver out of the backfield. We want to do that. Maybe you make yourself a finesse back, right? right? And, and in that case, depending on what the team wants to do, um, that's that's when you you can cater your player towards that. And that's something that for the SFL, when, when you go to the majors, um, teams that are scouting, teams that are going to draft people, they're at least I'm looking at that, right? Mm-hmm. You know, hey, we are in a need for... A tight end, let's just, let's just say. Okay, what is that tight end going to do? Is it going to be like Mike Dex, where we're going to spread him out wide as a receiver? Or do we want to tie up the line because he because we are going to block, right? right. If, we wanted, if, we, if we wanted a, a receiver, you know, Mike Dex is like 6'7", 265, right? So, you know, but if we want a receiver, maybe, you know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, six, tight end, 245 pounds. That's, that's really good. But you know what? You're going to be on those heavy packages, goal line sets. You have to push the DN. Maybe we're going to be looking at a Bill Henry. 6'5", mm-hmm. 260 pounds. His build, he can catch passes. He's, he has very good hands. But his build is different from, say, a guy like, I don't know, um, 
Cesar Ackerman. Mm, in the okay. You gotcha. know, or TJ Punk. We also had TJ Punk with the Aztecs. I know that you're, it's, it's with your Scorpions. Uh, you know, 6'2", 240-ish pounds. Mm-hmm. You know, and we use TJ Punk a lot for, you know, for short passes and, and, and stuff like that because, you know, he was, and now he's a wide receiver, of course. Um, so, yeah, it does matter. You should talk to coaches. Highly recommend that. And, and just find out what offense, what defense you will be a part of. Mm-hmm. A part of. Communication is key. Oh, absolutely. Think, for anything, you know. All the time. All the time. Every time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how do you. I'm just going to say right quick, going back at it again, don't be afraid or don't be scared if, if your player is deemed undersized. You know, uh, Jacob McCall, your former teammate, he plays now with the Aztecs too. He's 5'11". Mm-hmm. He's out there getting 1,100 yards in a season, eight touchdowns. That's right. You know, it, it, it's it's just how you use them. You know, That's it. Maybe, maybe I'm not going to use Jacob McCall, a lot of 50-50 balls, jump up high, but... Jacob McCall can run a post right and he can burn your corner. So mm-hmm. that, that, that's how it goes. I love it. That's right. Um, what do you think about the, the interesting things that have happened in the league? I don't know if I've talked to you about this since um, I think the last time you were on my show, I want to say it was what, eight months ago? Probably. Yeah, about eight months ago because you was on the show with Mike All and Demond yeah. and MSG. So, yes. um, what do you think about all of the good stuff that's happening? I mean, from the ESTV deals to the Next Level Sports deals to actually being in Vegas and having to see all of our games on the HyperX Arena screens Arena. in there. Yeah, no, it's crazy. And, they keep, and, the, and the league keeps growing and growing and growing. Right. Again, I've said this story many times. I remember back in the day, Saturdays at noon, Four people watching, including me. Four people, what? Five people watching. It was both team owners, maybe a couple players, myself, watching. Wow. And now to be at the Luxor Arena is just like crazy. Like I, I was talking to 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 my supervisor. She lives in Salt Lake, but she's from Vegas. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, hey, you know, we'll, um, you know, cause I was talking to her, and it's like, hey, you know, we'll have a convention, and we will be in in Vegas. It's going to be at the Luxor. And she was like, whoa, at the Luxor Arena, you know, because obviously she's from there. She knows the place and everything. And, uh, and it's just huge. It's just huge. And, and the eSports TV, you know, I was talking to my brother because, uh, you know, he, she, he loves gaming and, and he's like very, very deep into it. And uh, I was like, you know, we'll be at, you know, the ESL will be at the Luxor. And he was like, what the heck? Like, obviously, <laughs> everybody knows what the Luxor is. And, and it's just exciting and, and it's just it makes you excited for what's what's to come next you know will we be in ESPN one day like like championship game in ESPN plus okay let's yeah, like, like 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 <laughs> seriously like you know right, right now I'm, I'm right now it's crazy but it was crazy to me back then seven years ago to think the SFL will be on television will be at, at the co- holding conventions with 200 some people crazy right it's crazy yeah. how times change now you've been in league since when season one three three so that's when um user players were actually implemented right no it, it came uh yes and no um season three i joined the baltimore franchise it was the baltimore crash back then. right i was a free safety i was actually eddie gage's safety teammate he was a strong i was a free <laughs> and and i technically it, it did become the first team to use user players you know because it was real people i was a free safety eddie gage was a strong uh we had uh nick take quick was a everybody was a re, was real people right mike das ojo das everybody was real people and um and we became basically the first user team uh the league didn't move to that um kind of thing until like fully until season six mm. um okay. yeah like fully like you know what more more so season seven season seven actually season seven is when all teams are gonna be filled up with some user players here you go mm. it was season seven when when that actually that became like 
everybody's doing this. So, okay. so yeah. So coaching question for you. Mm -hmm. Since you've been in the league for since season three and you, you know, definitely grown with the league and coaching and everything and seeing the, the um, different styles, different trying to do things. How has coaching changed for you throughout the course of the seasons? It um, keeps changing. Mm -hmm. It keeps changing. Um, Mighty said it on his podcast, the Elite Podcast too. Uh, I think he was on the podcast with the Toros, if I remember correctly. And, and he was like, you never stop learning. We, we're still learning new things as coaches. We're, we're still, you know, testing things different and just keep keep growing as play callers. You know, t -Pad's still learning. Mighty's still learning. We've been playing this game for actually all pro is today is now the fifth um all pro is turning 15 years old in four days or three days something like that we've been playing this game for almost 15 years most of them mind you as um player versus player which is completely different but we coaches have we have coached for like eight years and 16 seat or something like that and and it's just keeps changing and changing and changing and, and it will never stop evolving. You know, as, as you may know, uh, the SFL, not the SFL, the All-Pro Football Playbook, Offense and Defense, has a total of 8,451 plays. I'm 84, sorry, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I thought it was 6,000. You said 84? 8,451 Indian <laughs> Okay. Offense and Defense. Offense is 64, as, as you're saying. If you put the defense, it becomes the number I said, um, and it's just insane the work that the coaches do to put that amount into 100 plays, 120 mm -hmm. plays. Mm -hmm. You know, like it, it's not until you see like games in preseason where we are running like generic playbooks or semi-generic playbooks where we just, you know, the way Atlanta does it. And I, I, I take, I took this from Atlanta. What they do with the preseason is like. We're going to take 10 offensive formations and I'm going to put every single play in that formation. It's better than a generic playbook, like the full generic thing, but it's still semi-generic. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, it still has some plays that you wouldn't really put in your playbook. Right. Um, but it's a little bit better. And when you see those games, it's like, that's when you really, really as a viewer appreciate the work that the coaches put on their playbook Man. to make it look good and to make it look cohesive, to make it look like a solid piece of work. But how stressful is it for you guys with AI having that final say so on whether the efforts that you spent all week putting in is actually going to get called ultimately? How frustrating yeah. can that be? It, it could be, you know, we, we've, we've always been in a position where it's, second and goal at the three and we're passing out of the shotgun we've always been in that, <laughs> in that position right it's it, it, it's 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 nothing new but i could argue that also happens in in real life football look at super bowl 49 with the seahawks right like they pass the ball got intercepted that's just how the cookie crumbles eventually so uh it is frustrating but at the end of the day you know what you're signing for and and you know that ultimately not everything is going to be under your control, right? And I think coaches have done a great job at, you know, testing and simulating and, and just making it a way where they're taking the AI randomness a little bit off the the whole thing where mm -hmm. they can, where they where they are putting plays on certain formations very strategically, right? So, okay. so, so, so they evaluate that, you know, that's something that I, I do personally when I, when I'm simming and I'm, and I'm testing, I'm very observant. Uh, that's always, it's something I've always said. It's just like, I'm, I'm not hitting the sim button. I'm, I'm running errands. I'm eating, I'm taking a shower. Then I come back to see the final score. No, that's, that's not how you sim. You have to sit down. You have to put, I, I that's what I do. I, I put the emulator right there. I have a screen on the, um, the emulator. I put the emulator right there and I put a, a notepad file over here and i'm going first down and 10 strong power eye strong stretch mm. 
Second down and three, boom, 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 boom. And I, how many times we run certain play on first and 10? What's our third down play calling? What's our fourth down play calling? What are we doing inside the goal line? What are we doing here? Be very observant. And that way you can put your playbook in a way where you have basically a little bit more of what you desire in certain situations, right? Right. So, so you're, you're, you're looking at goal line. Oh, you know what? We are running a, this shotgun corner post route on the two yard line. That's not good. Let, let me fix that. Mm-hmm. Let me test again. Okay, right. we are not run, we are not running it anymore. We are instead running the football with Phoenix Jones, which is what I want. And I, I, I don't. I never could understand why anybody would walk away. I mean, I get things happen, but what happens if you miss that key play um, that you may need to remove from the playbooks? And yeah, because you were distracted, now you forgot you didn't see that. So now you're getting ready to set it, print it, send it, and then all of a sudden, oh man, you see it work out on the field. Like, ooh, thought I took that out of there, and then you yeah, send it. man, it's a it's a bad feeling. It's a bad feeling, but it's yeah, it is. But that you know, when you send your playbook, you you have to double, triple check exactly. And, yeah, and I'm and I'm comparing like I have the Excel file sheet that we sent to Cam for the playbooks mm-hmm. and I have the emulator right here and I'm like okay this this matches run because you, you can see on the game right uh mm-hmm. short pass medium pass long pass you add that up 45 and then you look at the, uh, at the Excel sheet passes 45 okay it matches that's good so you have to double check triple check making sure it's as good as you want it to be and then you go ahead and send it mm-hmm. yeah and it is about being very careful. Yeah. Know? And and knowing that, you know, you got to take your time, even though you got to st- just don't start on that last second, you know, <laughs> then you have enough time to get everything in there the way you needed to, you know, but exactly. that's good. That's good advice, you know, because there are a lot of people that are trying out. They want to be coaches and um, they want to be scouts and may not understand the logistics of it or mm-hmm. even how much time it really entails because it's easy for you to come in and be like, oh, I want to be an owner or I want to be a coach. But then when you look at like, oh, I, I got to spend about five or six hours per week. Yeah, oh, exactly. Uh, we, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, you may think, oh, you know, I was a, a high school coach for 15 years. You know, I got this. And okay. then you look at it and it's just like a slap in the face. Honestly, it's, it's just like, no, you you don't got this. You have to spend the time. You do have to spend the time. It's way different. You don't have full control all the time on what you're calling on first down like you do in real life, right? right. If, if it's third and inches, you're going to tear your quarterback face to face, run a quarterback sneak. But do that in the SFL. That's not going to happen. I tell you what, Jeremy Vega impressed me because when I interviewed him, he said that he only spent like freaking, I think he said maybe like an hour. He only ran like maybe two or three sims or something. And I think he won that season. I think they Mm -hmm. won the championship that season. I'm like, Mm -hmm. Jeremy, how can you, how can you literally only run like maybe about two or three sims a week and then you still be as effective? He was like, I've just been doing this for so long, you know? And so I kind of... Yeah, this is something I said on Say With Your Chest because Eddie was asking me, mm-hmm. you know, he's like, hey, what? To me, I also run only like one or two sims mm-hmm. because I have already spent those 15 hours a day for seven years. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's not like mm-hmm. I just came in and it's like one sim, I'm good. You know, no, it's like I, 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 I now have the experience to do that because for seven years, I spent I, I was like on my days off from work, let's say on Saturday, I wake up, you know, sometimes I woke up at 9 a.m., get mm-hmm. some breakfast, take a shower, whatever I have to do. 10, 10, 30 a.m., Xbox, beep, <laughs> on. Two in the morning, like four, after 14 hours, I was still simming and I was still observing. And, and that's what it takes. Like, seriously, you have to put in the work. Hey, that's why you make it to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's why. Yeah. Uh, that's why you. That's why you have what you had. You know. That's why you have the the Hall of Fame players because you put in the work for it. So yes, a lot. A lot of people uh, sometimes not with me, but overall in the SFL, and it's like, oh, it, it's all about luck. And 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 let me tell you. Let let me let me tell you some. 
I, I heard a line, I heard a phrase that says, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And that could not be farther away from the truth is, yeah, you know, it has some luck. You know, the play that I put in was called, but don't undermine the 60 hours I put on in the past two weeks. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it's, it's, you know, I made that and work. I put the playbook for a reason. The play got called because I put it in there for a reason. Right. And the fact that she had to sift through 8,451 plays to be able to figure this out. Come on. To choose the best 105 of them. <laughs> put in your playbook. The elite 100, of, because it's 70 for offense, 35 for defense, right? So that's the minimum. Right? Right. Out of all those plays, I sit, th- I, I set my behind down and I, and, and I watched maybe not all 8,400. But a good thousand, uh, well, a good few thousands of plays. Put put that on the practice mode. Okay, that doesn't work. Burn that play. <laughs> right? Okay, that does work, but I don't have actually the pieces to do it. Got it. No. Oh, that actually works. I like that. Okay, write it down. Okay. You know? So, yeah. Well, more power to you. More power to all the owners and all the owner yeah. coaches that are doing both tasks. It is, uh, it, it, you deserve all the respect in the world for it, you know? Um, is there any advice before I let you go mm-hmm. that you want to give to the new players that have just entered into the league and to those that were fortunate, that sorry, excuse me, unfortunate enough mm-hmm. That did not get drafted. Mm-hmm. It's not how you get there. It's the fact that you will eventually get there and you have to make the most out of your opportunity when that situation happens. You know, I was I was right there in the draft and, and we we're talking about like undrafted people, but I was in I was I was in the draft, I was in the panel, and and I said it doesn't matter if you get drafted number one or number one hundred and five because we will all be playing right there at the same time. Your progressions will be the same. You have the same opportunity as anybody else. Just make the most out of your opportunity when that happens. Mm-hmm. And be respectful in the chats um, because we owners look at that a lot. Like seriously, we, we, we don't say it out loud, right? But we are lurking. Okay, what is he saying in the gen chat? What what is he doing? You know, is he acting a fool on the on the Twitch channel when we when or the, the YouTube channel when when teams are playing? You know, is he being respectful to people? You know, is he attending to games? You know, is he being supportive of his teammates or or is he complaining because he's not getting the ball enough? What is he doing? You know, mm. so so that's the that's probably the best advice. It, it's just. Be be also be yourself, but be the best version of yourself. I think it's it's, it's incredibly important. And um, yeah, yeah, I, I I think that's it. Talk to your coaches as, as I said. Make sure you know you have that communication and be coachable here in the SFL. You know, be coachable. Like coaches are putting the work and and they're telling you something for a reason. You know, n- you know it's it's not because they want to be like overly like you know, egotistical and I run the business, I run the show here and everything. No, it's because they want you to succeed. No coach is going to tell you, you know, let's do this because they want to set you up for failure. That's right. never going to happen. There, there's one common goal that's winning, that, that's making, you know, you look good on, on, on the football field. Just tr- tr- trust your coaches. Like they're, they're there for a reason. Right. And also understand that what you, what your player does has to fit into the grand scheme of yes. the plays of, of, of the 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 group so yes mm-hmm. you might be able to get those um those yards that you you're looking for mm-hmm. but then what about the rest of your team you know this right. is not a this is not golf where it's just all on you like you exactly. literally got other people so this is a team sport uh, you yes. know this is not a, it's a golf or tennis where it's all about you know boxing Absolutely. you know it's, it's it's you and the other dude you, and, you know that's it take a swim that's it, <laughs> that's, it. that's it exactly that's it. that's it and um if, if a coach is putting you in a place it's, it's going to be for a reason like for example let's say you are a number four wide receiver let's just say for an example right maybe i'm not going to get the you know 15 catches for 300 yards but 
the coach puts a four wide receiver in some place for a reason, and, and you're going to go get those key first downs, you know, three catches, all for first downs that get the drive moving. Your team scored a touchdown at the end of it because of you, in big part because of you. Maybe you didn't get the ball in the end zone, but your team didn't punt because you caught the ball. There you go. You know, so, yeah. Awesome, man. Oh, I love it, man. I love having you on, Ramos. I learn a lot from you every time I, I have you on. Thank and you. And I, I hope other people are listening. I hope other people will take your advice because, you know, you, you do. You've been in the league for a while. And, mm-hmm. you know, you've, you've accomplished a lot. So when you're giving out these gems, I hope people are taking it for what it is. Yeah, surely. And, you know, my DMs are always open, even if you don't play for the Aztecs, like if you're in the minors, whatever, you know, so anybody can holler at me and say, you know what, I'm, I'm, do, I'm doing this, you know, what do you say, you know, and, and I'll always be willing to help. So, I love it. I love it. Are there any last words that you would like to to give everybody? Um, or do you want to sing a song for me or maybe recite a poem? Uh, I don't know any poems. I don't have a time to, to write down one. Uh, Just damn. make up some. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a terrible singer. Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't do that. Ash, mm. Ash. no, you, you, no, you, you, you don't want to hear. You sound just like Adam Chance. You know, you, you guys, <laughs> be promising me the world. Be, oh, oh, I got you next time. I got you. Well, then next time comes, and you, for you, is eight months later. <laughs> <laughs> and still, no. It still is enough time. You had enough uh, apparently. time, apparently. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> but no. no it's okay. thank, th- yeah, thank you very much for for having me again. Uh, I hope to be sooner in, in again in sooner than eight months. And uh, <laughs> okay. yeah, there you go. And uh, you know, for everybody watching, thank you for for supporting the league. Thank you for being a part of it and enjoy this season because it's gonna be the most competitive one yet. I know mm-hmm. that for a fact. Yes, he actually knows a lot. What's what's your nickname? Yeah. But I'll see you later, Ramos. And listen, you're invited to come back on the show whenever you want to. And Thank I you. am doing like kind of a revolving kind of guest host thing, you know. So Love if it. you want to come and help me host the show one day, you can too. Love it, absolutely. All right, see you soon, brother. See ya. What's up, SFL Nation? And welcome back to my fourth and goal interviews. Ending things off with Mr. Mike All, GM for the Canton Classics. And how are you doing? Hey, lady, I'm good. Hey, good to see you, man, as always. It's been uh, eight months. <clears throat> I don't think it's been eight months. It might it have been eight weeks. <laughs> I just looked at the last video. It was eight months. That, your math is wrong. Uh, something's okay, wrong with okay, your math. Okay, all right. <laughs> Welcome back, either way. <laughs> Man, I had to bring you on a show to just, first off, before we start anything else, congratulate you on the job well done that you did over there in Canton. I mean, for you guys not to have had to draft anybody, and you had your lock, your your roster on lock before the draft even happened, it's awesome, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it was... Uh... A goal of mine coming over there to not only have the owners do something that has never been done before, but myself do something that had never been done before, just to thank them for letting me be a part of this. And so uh, I wanted to do something big and I went out and I I accomplished my goal and it felt really good. Um, It went down to the wire. I I won't lie. It went down to the wire. Uh, We had some some other plans in mind, but uh, they kind of fell through and uh, fortunately, uh, <clears throat> we had somebody step up and, and take that place. And uh, yeah, it felt really good to do something that had never been done before in the progression era. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Heck, you can give some of us some pointers on how you did that one. I mean, you know, I typically don't have to draft, you know, every season, but, yeah. you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing to be able to start off on the right foot to start your entire franchise off on the right foot. Now, that said, though, do you feel any extra added pressure 
I mean, uh, I did my job. I, I did my work. Uh, the pressure now goes on to the coaching staff, and uh, they, they do seem ready to take on that pressure and uh, go out and show what they're capable of. Indeed. Now, to that point, we were hanging out in Netma server today, and uh, as you know, the content community, the, the creators of the community, get together and do our picks for the entire season for every team. Um, I participated in it last season and uh, no, I'm not doing it this season. <laughs> All right, so Tyler, y'all y'all gave me so much hell about that. I, <laughs> I am not doing that, but um, to each his own. If you decide you want to go ahead and do it, please. I'm not, I'm not discouraging anybody from taking part of it. That's why I want to get that out there first. Mm -hmm. I just won't because you know, Bo and other people, Longstar, won't let me, ain't gonna leave the, let, let the three and nine go, you know? Uh -huh. um, but I did see you over there. And apparently, I haven't looked at the sheets yet, but apparently people have Canton uh, not being as effective. So I, I, I don't have hate for those people. I'm, I'm not angry, I'm not upset. I just had questions. I wanted to understand their line of thinking, right? Okay. On on paper, our roster is excellent. We've got a lot of great players, really great builds. Uh, even our lower level, lower value players, most of them have almost maxed out builds, right? And if you watch our preseason game against uh, uh, Louisiana, with generic playbooks, understanding generic playbooks, but they still showed out. Like we had, mm -hmm. we had Gary Bernie get player of the game with five sacks. <laughs> like that never happens. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and and I understand there's some questions surrounding uh, surrounding our our coaching staff. Uh, Mike's never actually officially been a head coach from start to finish on a team in in the, in the regular season for the pros, uh, but he did do a great job uh, season 15 with Louisiana with with what started as Gerald's playbook and what eventually became his playbook. They went nine and three, they made the playoffs. Um, he's done really well in the minors, but I know there's a difference between the minors and the pros as, as, as far as competition level. Um, but two championships on, on two different coaching staffs. That says something, right? It does. Um, now Chris Porter, a little bit less experienced, uh, was a defensive coordinator in, in the minors uh, for his third season now. Uh, but there was a gap in between two and three there. Um, so this this is his time to show out, and he's got some great help from Twin Screw. Uh, Chris Komasek has, has been advising the coaching staff, uh, helping out here and there with what he can. So I've got three great minds all putting in on that coaching staff, and the proof will be in the pudding once they get out on the field. But I understand until that actually happens, people are going to have questions. And I, I've got nothing against people that were putting us at three and nine in their predictions. I just want to understand the reasoning. Like those people also had Seattle at six and six. Ethan's a good coach. There's some good people on, on Seattle's team, but how do they have twice as many wins and they don't even have a full roster? That's that's my question. I, that, that's all I was wondering. And no, 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 no disrespect to Seattle. I got nothing but respect for Ethan and David and, and the people over there. I'm just curious as to people's lines of thinking. I can understand that uh, when it was brought up over there. Uh, it's a valid point. I will tell you from my perspective, I can't answer for anybody else. When I did it last season, I'm looking at it from game by game. So, I didn't necessarily take into account, and I'm going to use Lone Star as an example, right? I didn't take into account that when I am going line by line, game by game, that I'm putting them at three and nine. It's because this is just me looking at the matchup for what it is. And then basing off, okay, last season, they were kind of falling short here. And this team supersedes them, for, you know, on paper right now here. So... For me, it was just like taking into account what happened last season and then 
basically kind of taking into account what they the pieces that they've added. But basically, I was just going off last season, so I'm not sure if people are doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys weren't even existing, so exactly. I think it's more so when when it comes to when it comes to the expansion teams. I feel it's like you guys are automatically going to get the raw end of the deal because you are new because. No one knows what you're capable of. And yes, you do see all of the all-stars that you have on your roster. But it is how all these all-stars are going to be incorporated by the coaches. And how they're going to play out on the field. Preseason, hey, I watched some of them. Yeah. I, I watched some. And you guys look good. But it is preseason. These are not real playbooks. These are generic. Correct. So it's... I think it's. I understand where you're coming from, though. I because if anybody said Arizona was going two and ten or three and nine, I would be like, "Oh, oh really? Please explain." Uh-huh. So I get where you're coming from, and it's just about Mike and Chris getting it together and proving everybody wrong. Sure. Period. And uh-huh. I've seen what Mike's new twin screw. Ten Mike ten twin screw. <laughs> Words are hard. Tongue, tongue, <laughs> tongue twister, yep. I know, right? I see what he can do because I've actually, I was in other leagues with him. Like, he was literally my coach in other leagues. And we were effective. So, I know his, the capability, his capabilities. Mm-hmm. But we shouldn't just... Like I said, it's... it's When you're filling out that thing, it's it's really tedious it took me about maybe a good hour and a half to do all teams so mike it's gonna be all right though. promise no, Y'all gonna I, be just fine. I know it's all in fun and, and i got no hate for anybody i i just wanted to understand lines of thinking that that's all i was curious about did anybody give you any clarity no no that's fine that's their prerogative too yeah it's true it's true. So, with that, when you guys hear things like that, because I'm sure the whole lot of you knows, how does it, is that fuel to the fire? Is that like we're, pushing you guys in the, the right direction? We're excited for what we're going to do this season, and, and we know we're going to perform better than than that projection. We're we're not going to perform as well as uh, John Michael Suttis' projection. I don't think of uh, eleven and one or, or ten and two or whatever he had us had. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that awesome. Uh, but I don't see any reason why we missed the playoffs at all. Um, and I definitely feel like we'll be competing for the division championship. Um, I know what my guys are capable of. It's the whole reason I recruited them in the first place. Um, we've got a really good squad, and Mike knows what he's doing with them. And uh, with with our coaching staff working so well together, and, and I, I watch them talk all day long and, and see what they have to say and, and all the things they're going over. And I'm glad I'm not a coach. It's a lot of work. <clears throat> um, okay. But uh, I know they're gonna they're gonna perform well out on uh, on the field, and, and it's gonna show in week one. Uh, and it's going to be even better because it's going to be at the convention, mm-hmm. and, and I'm looking forward to it. And we're we're not we're not worried about you know, what what people's projections are. Uh, we're we're just going to focus on what we're doing and and the co- next coming game, and then the game after that after that game is done. Uh, we're not as much as I love everybody at Lone Star. We're not going to be this year's Lone Star. We're not going to be <laughs> ragging on everybody. We're we're just we're gonna do our thing and we're gonna have a great time doing it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, that's all you can do. Man. Just have fun with it, you know. Yeah. Um. So obviously, I've, I've, apparently, I've been having I have had pretty much the entire damn near the entire Canton team on this podcast since y'all been here. So I've been asking everybody who is. Or is there a sp- specific team or teams that you guys are looking forward to playing? And the cons- general consensus is week one. I'm curious. Do you feel the same? Or is there some some a team down the line that you're more looking forward to? Well, I will agree. Uh, Minnesota is definitely one of them. I really like those guys. And we've been having a lot of fun back and forth with them. 
Yeah. Um, and I'm really excited because Axel's coming to the convention. So we're, I'm going to get, and I told him, I'm, I'm sitting right next to you, buddy. Like, we're watching this game together, you and me. Um, and I'm going to have a lot of fun with that. Uh, but I'm also looking forward to London. Like, I, I want to, I want that to be a, a big time rivalry. That's, that's why I brought in his brother. So there's that, you know, familial <laughs> conflict there. Uh, plus, you know, there's obviously tension between Mike and Johnny. So having that kind of part to the rivalry too is nice. Um, and, and in looking for, for a name for that rivalry, I did a lot of scouring to find connections between London and Canton. And it hasn't been official, made official yet by any of the ownership. But uh, I think I found a really cool connection between London and Canton that'll uh, really be nice to have for a, a, a rivalry name. Okay. Yeah. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. And it's just, it seems like this season in particular, everybody is very excited. Um, maybe it was the, the new teams added. Maybe it's the TV deals and all of the good stuff that's happening in that regard, but it just seems like everybody's extra pumped. And I'm yeah. digging it. I like it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think there is a, a, a much higher level of excitement for this season than, than there has been the last several seasons that I've been here. Mm -hmm. um, now, it, it may have just been, you know, uh, rookie excitement. I, I feel like season 15 was pretty exciting because there were so many of us and, and so much new going on. But with all of us teams and, and everything that's happened and, and the convention that's coming up in Vegas. It, it's just, this season is crazy exciting. Mm -hmm. What was that transition like for you going from Jacksonville over to Canton? Like how did that conversation even come about? And what did Jackson, what, what did Jacksonville think once you told them? So uh, it came about uh, because, you know, these guys knew, uh, Christian and Adam knew that they needed uh, a strong front office uh, and coaching staff to really make a case for themselves. And uh, they were directed to me um, by at least Ross, if not more. Uh, and, and Ross was like, I don't know that he'll leave, but he's worth talking to. And uh, so I had a conversation with Christian and Adam and um i i was solid in jacksonville like I, I had no thoughts of leaving um i wasn't thinking about ownership myself uh just because i i don't feel that i'm ready for it um I, I feel like a little bit more experience maybe in the future um but with talking with these guys and, and hearing their vision for the team and and what they have going on i got really excited and then i thought about the fact that with coming in right away you know number one employee number one as i like to say uh on the ground floor and watching it and being a part of building it from the inside if i do go for ownership at some point uh, and then in the last expansion we'll call it um i'll understand the process i'll understand how it goes on i'll understand what's needed and what it takes and i think if if i do that makes my bid even stronger because i've been a part of all of this and I've, I've proven that I can be successful with it. Um, now, at this point, I'm going to say I'm not ready for ownership. I'm not looking to jump into it. But who knows? In, in a year or two, when, when expansion comes around again, maybe I'll feel differently. Exactly. Um, but uh, I had the conversation with the guys, and I, I jumped on board and had to talk with Frank and, and Frank uh, understood everything I was saying and was really excited for me. And he was actually surprised that I wasn't telling him, Hey, I'm going for ownership myself. And when I explained to him like how I wasn't ready and this, this will be you know, a good stepping stone towards that for the future. He was all on board. He's, he's been excited for me the whole time. Um, he's been a great friend and a, and a, a, a great leader to me. He's taught me a lot. And, uh, I spent a lot of time in that transition uh, trying to make sure that Jacksonville was left in a good place because uh, we had a lot of losses. Uh, there was a lot of people that left, not including myself. And so I did my best to try and put as many pieces into place for them as I could before I left uh, and fully transitioned over to Canton and, and built what we have in Canton now. Um, and, and Frank was really appreciative of all the efforts I put in. I worked a lot with John to try and get him you know, ready to not fully step into my shoes, but be there to be the guy to take the, the torch and run with it for me. 
and they there there was obviously a misstep they they ended up leaving the draft missing one one player but uh they still did pretty good and super happy with uh the guys that i put in place and i know they're gonna they're gonna do well because you know frank's got that big brain over there and it is yeah, and john, is. yeah john does a lot of work so it's they're still gonna be in a good place and and uh uh I'm looking forward to actually meeting Frank in person at the convention as well. Cause he wasn't at the last one. Right. Uh, which was disappointing. Cause that's when he made it like he was elected into the hall of fame. This was his, his acceptance and he wasn't even there for it, but he sent that nice video, He did. but it's, it's not the same as being there in person. So at least this time I'll get to meet him in person, you know, give him a hug. So. There you go. Exactly, man. And I was wondering how that all worked out. I didn't I didn't think it was gonna be too much of a big blow up or no really emotional kind of thing because Frank is just not like that. No. I think Frank is, you know, by me working so closely with him like um outside of the SFL, I gained a different understanding of him. Yeah. And he is really, really a cool, calm and collected individual, very intelligent, very smart. Mm-hmm. Um and but I do understand that he does want you to be happy ultimately. So that means you seek somewhere else as long as you're happy. Yeah. You know? As long as you're not, as long as you're not being a jerk about something, he'll support you all the way. Exactly. And that's with anybody, you know. You just you get more respect from people when you do the right thing versus not. So. Mm-hmm. Um, was it a difficult? getting all of those players to come to sign with Kent. And the reason I asked is because it came up on my show one time that the only reason why players are actually going to Kent is because of fame and notoriety that is there. Do Was it easier for you to to get everyone to come over because of this? Or because they're like, hey, you know, I'm, I love Mike all. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm down with Mike's lens. What was it? So... Uh, I won't. I won't deny the fact that that all the things that we have going on with the Hall of Fame and stuff like that isn't a big draw. I mean, it certainly is, and it, it definitely helped. Uh, but the majority of the players that we signed were all people that I was already friends with, that I'd already built relationships with. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that hard to convince them to come in for a talk. There was a couple of people that came to us of their own accord, um, and they were ready to jump on from the beginning. So it wasn't that hard either. Um, and then there was a couple of, of, of new, uh, new people, um, uh, our lineman, uh, he was fresh to the SFL Mm -hmm. and, uh, definitely like what I had to say. And our punter, Doug six, uh, he's my favorite, uh, because he is an actual Cantonite. Like they met him at the fatherhood festival while they were there, had a nice long talk with them, found out. This dude was a punter in real life Mm -hmm. uh, at at the collegiate level, was ready to go to the pro level. But then, you know, life came up and and he wasn't able to take that next step. And uh, he's he's excited to take that next step here with us in the SFL. Fantastic. Love it. I love it. You know, and I feel I felt like because you worked so closely with um, hell, you, you made the team, basically. So. I felt like that question was was definitely needed for you because you were on the ground floor. You were literally talking to everybody. You were literally making these contracts and and, and making sure that these guys were happy. So it's pretty dope, Mike. Yeah, it's pretty dope. It, it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. It was it was a couple months of hard work. Um, my wife uh, at one point was like, "Are you almost done so we can have more time together?" <laughs> I'm like. Mm-hmm. Sweetie, I'll sit next to you. Just because I'm working on SFL stuff doesn't mean I'm not right next to you. <laughs> right. But right. Uh, no, I, I understood her point, and, and and she was she was happy to finally get some free time with me. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of work and a, a lot of uh, setting up meetings and and uh, leveraging those relationships that I'd built in since season 15. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it was kind of like I like I've said in the past. It was kind of like. I was given a blank canvas and allowed to go and just paint my masterpiece. And, and I think I did that with this team. You did it. And we're just going to see how it all gels together in the end, you know? Yeah. See if we use the right kind of paint. Indeed. Indeed. What's the most important thing 
about being a GM to you? Having having those relationships, work, uh, knowing knowing the people. Like mm-hmm. it, it doesn't matter uh, if you have the greatest build if you have really bad personality. Like it, it, <laughs> right. <laughs> if, if, if and and knowing you know I, I'm really easy going and I can get along with everybody if I can't get along with you there's definitely no way you're going to fit in on the team and that's going to cause problems with the team and, and, it, and it ultimately won't be successful um, but yeah being a GM is all about building quality relationships with quality people and uh, there isn't one person on my team that I wouldn't say is a quality person Fantastic. Should you better not say it. you was the one that hired him. <laughs> you brought him over there. That's why I brought him in. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. So are you going to be able to still maintain your GM responsibilities um, and also work with, I don't know, like me with the player of the week art, like your editing and all the other things that you do, like is this going to be a daunting task for you? Or are you pretty much used to it because you were doing the same thing in, J- in Jacksonville? It's all the same stuff I did in Jacksonville. The scouting, the the editing for, for the content team, um, the, the massive amount of work I put into your article. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't have to do that much. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's to me it's it's what the job is uh granted obviously the editing and stuff isn't a part of being a gm but uh that's just to me what what the sfl is it's what i do uh every every month for the for the sfl it's it's nothing new and it's exactly what i expect it uh to be so it's not like i'm diving into a, a deeper pool um with for the first time without my floaties so gotcha. i'm 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 ready for it. I'm prepared. It's 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 the same same ball game, just a different uh, color uniform. Gotcha. The draft. What did you think about the draft? First of all, all of the rookies, the surplus of rookies that we had to join this this season alone, and then the draft being one of the largest that we've ever had. What are your thoughts on that? There there was some there was some uh, uh, rookies I was disappointed. Uh, not being able to draft. Uh, there were some people I really liked, um, and there was nothing against them. It's not like I was like, screw the rookies, I'm not drafting anybody. It was just I had a goal when I went in, and and that's what I focused on. Yeah. Um, and and hopefully someday in the future, uh, if something opens up, these guys that I built, you know, some good relationships with, hopefully they can find their way over to Canton. Um, but uh, they're they're. they're and being a head coach of Lincoln too, I had some 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 people I was really excited for to see him make it to the pros. And boy, a lot of my team did make it to the pros. Uh, just my quarterback and my running back didn't make it, and I'm excited to have them back next season because I'll have the best quarterback and the best running back next season. There you go. Hopefully, um, win yourself a championship, right? Oh yeah, that's 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 the plan. Uh, you know, the first season the minors went Madison, and then it went Albuquerque, mm-hmm. and then Salt Lake City. And now we've went Madison and Albuquerque. Well, now it's time for Lincoln, which was Salt Lake City. So it's, we got to keep that pattern going. That's that's the goal, right? Okay. Um, good point. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, but I was I was excited to be on the draft panel. It was the first time I was on the panel and not the dude in the camera in the war room doing something silly. You know, I got to do something <laughs> silly just being on the panel. Uh, and I had a good time with that. I was, I really enjoyed that. I was, I was concerned and nervous that I might be the only knucklehead to talk about a two-way player who was not draft eligible, but I was, I was fortunate enough to have enough tools open to make sure that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I had a good, I had a good yeah. time with all the people on the panel and watching, watching the, the people get drafted and, uh, catching Cam's mistake with the, you know, the winter draft thing and just changing my background to a snowing, snowing background. That was, that was a lot of fun. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, it was, it was a really good time and, and we had a lot of, a lot of quality people make it into the SFL. Um, and now there's, it, it's very quiet in the minors. Um, not granted that's because Rostelli isn't there assigning new people back again, but, uh, 
it, it's like you could you shout out in the M chat and there's there's no response. It's just echoes right now. <laughs> mm. So when is he thinking? When do we know when he's gonna get that started back up again? Or? Well, I think he just got back from his vacation, mm. um, and okay. so I, I'm sure he put in. A, a little bit of time to recover from that and, and was we're doing a little bit of work um so it's going to start to build up uh, real quick now uh okay. and then of course now he's gonna you know head to the convention and right doing all that work um right. but yeah and we've got time i mean the the miners doesn't start until what like october so so we're good yeah um, it's i've been seeing some new people come in and just oh when do we sign up where do we sign up i'm like oh calm down yeah calm down. No, I'm excited for them to get signed up too. I'd like to see new players uh, show up in Lincoln that I can, you know, greet and 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 get to know. So yeah, because clearly you're gonna need to replace your whole roster over there. So yeah, you, I'm sure I'm sure Basically. you would. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this it's just the general excitement that they have. It's just and they yeah. they're like asking every day, hey, so when do we do this? When do we? So okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's good. I li- I like people to come in and be excited to to be Absolutely. a part of this. You know, that's how I was. I was excited to come in and be a part of this. Yeah. And uh, let me look where we are now, right? So. Mhm. Mm-hmm. I know I got on everybody's nerves because I talked to everybody. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So well, that's what you got to do. That's that's yeah. what we tell these rookies. The the prospects, I should say. We well, you got to talk to everybody. Get get yourself out there. It, because. I think the misconception can be sometimes is that owners are always watching the chats. Owners are all, I mean, and in a sense, yes, but it's 150 plus people that join. There's no way one owner is literally going to be able to sit. I mean, can, but are you really going to sit down and, and, and talk to each and every one person? No, you guys got to take some responsibility and go and meet them. And yeah. go and and like introduce yourself. Like, hey, this is why you want me on your team when that time comes. Most definitely, um, yeah. and not. I mean, only the the people that are on coaching staffs and the miners have access to the minor chat, right? Um, yeah. Which is why, as a GM, I'm happy to be head coach in Lincoln or or have been a part of the the staff in Salt Lake City. And I'll be honest with you, I am always watching. I'm I'm reading every line of that M League chat just to get a feel for these these uh, minor league prospects before uh, I start thinking about who I want to draft. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's 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 a lot of work, but uh, I, I'm I find the time to to make sure I'm I'm reading all that and getting a feel for all these guys. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're good for that. You will good for that. Um, and I think that's important because that's how you get to know the persons that you are going to be added, possibly adding to your team. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I do wish that that owners were pretty much more active in the chats. I get why they're not, but at the same time, I kind of wish that everybody was a little bit more active. Now, they did. It, there was a point that was brought up about the SFLM and the fact that we don't see all the well owners don't see all of the um conversations that are going on because not all rookies are talking in the general chats in the sfl Correct. servers yeah. so it's like how do if they're not coming to us right and they're not letting us know that they're there how do we gauge that correct if we're not in the sflm if you're not the head coach of Lincoln, or if you're not on you know, doing anything. Exactly. And that all comes from the, the miners reaching out. And, mm-hmm. and, and I think, I think there was a, uh, a unique thing with this class where not, not all of them felt the need to reach out. And, and I don't understand where that came from. Cause I know all of us coaches were saying, Hey, reach out, talk to these teams. Um, not granted. They still found places on teams. Good for them. Uh, mm-hmm. But the the main key is this is it's a person league. Like yeah, we all have players, but I don't care what your guy did in the minor leagues. I don't care if he had the most touchdowns ever. I don't care if he had the least touchdowns ever. If you're a quality person with a decent build, we can make you a great player in in the pros. But I want to hang out with you in the locker room. I want to have fun and joke with you. If if you're kind of just stale and and don't talk a lot 
why why do I want to hang out with you? Right? Good point. Yeah, so you got you got to reach out. You got to show us, you got to show all the teams that you're the person that we want to spend time with. Yeah. I mean because it's not just the avatar that you look on field, you know. Yeah. Everybody anybody can create a player, but are you compatible with the team? Are you compatible with the owners and all of that? Are you, or are you just here to cause trouble? You know, exactly. I, I do know the trouble makers don't usually last too long here, which is something that I'm really grateful for. Oh, yeah. Um, I had a question that I was going to ask while you were talking, and it eluded me, and I have to. That's remember. okay. I'll give you a minute to think about it because uh, that I'm going to hop back on, you know, the people I want to hang out with. Uh, there was a young lady that was on my team in Lincoln, and, and you and I got to meet her at the last convention. Uh, you had her on your last show. Uh, Skippy. Skippy is my favorite. Love Skippy. Skippy. Oh, my God. Yeah, Skippy is great, and, and I'm so glad she got drafted by Carolina and made it to the pros. Uh, <laughs> if I had had the room, I'd have brought her into Canton. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sad that she's not able to make it to this convention, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm super glad that she was just by random chance put into to the Lincoln locker room with me and I got to spend all that time with her. She's, she's so much fun and, and I love Skippy. Oh, me too. Me too. I mean, it's a, it's a bright spot. I told her that she just, if I'm having a bad day or if I'm just feeling some kind of way, if I go talk to her, I'm, whatever I was feeling, I won't. Well, yeah. And she changes that. And I think having people like that in the community is what makes us different from everybody else and this is why people stay this is why people want to come back and want to join not just because we're watching a simulation we're hanging out we're creating relationships and friendships and all of that good stuff and it's a it's a nice thing it really is and yeah. it's something that's genuine it's not something that's you know pretentious mm -hmm. and that's why you stay but my question was as an SFLM coach, and I'm wondering, I need to actually talk to more of you guys about it. What are you guys advising the players when they're entering? Because there has been some mention that people still don't know what they're doing or, hey, I'm still kind of lost, I'm not really knowing. So I guess when I want to have an understanding as to when you are a rookie and you come into the league, and I, I joined Lincoln's locker room, right? Mm -hmm. What should I expect me? Well, you should expect that a lot of people are going to reach out and welcome you to the team. <clears throat> uh, we're going to get you in touch with Doug Day, uh, who happens to be my team's, you know, personal progressions guru, so he can teach you about, you know, how to progress. Um, and we're going to give you tips and pointers on on how to be successful in the league, as far as you know, reaching out to teams and and being positive. Um, there was, I mean, there was a couple of people, and I'm not going to name any names, that, that spent a lot of time going back and forth with, with uh, what's, what was clearly hate for each other. Uh, and maybe it wasn't meant to be hate in the beginning, um, but it sure does put a negative spin on your name and, and makes it so people like me probably aren't going to want to draft you. Um, so, so we try and, you know, make sure we, we promote, you know, positivity in our locker room and and uh make sure that you you have fun um my locker room wasn't as active as i had hoped it would have been this last season but it was still fairly active we still had some really good people in there uh sabo kanan matthias citrion skippy um there was yeah there was a lot of really good people in there and and uh um with the new people coming in uh they're gonna have not only us coaches to look forward to uh to learn from but uh uh they're gonna have uh slider our quarterback he's gonna be a big leader for them logan lee uh he's gonna be a, a good leader for them because these guys have experience and they they know what's going on um so so you basically you, you just want to in the minors you you want to po promote being positive having a good fun time because uh, we're all paying customers even the minors uh, so they should enjoy what they're paying for, um, but also, you know, how to progress, how to build your player, and how to promote yourself to the to the teams. 
And that's good because you definitely want people that are just joining the league to start off on the right foot and you don't want them to kind of have to feel their way around in the dark, you know, then when it's time to get drafted and bills are in question and like, okay, so why did you spend all your points on this instead of this, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's just, as, as, as long as you guys down there are taking the time out to explain, even if you, if you decided to give the options as to what's available, explain to them like, why, why do I need to do this? Because some people may know, because they're sports fans, they play sports, whatever. But I guarantee you that there are some people that don't know, that are afraid to ask, that are afraid to say something because they don't want to look stupid or they don't yeah. want to look like or be embarrassed. And sure. it's nothing like that. I would encourage hell, I'll ask anything. I, I, it's something that I learned maybe yesterday. If I got some questions about it, I'm going to ask every question that I need to ask. Yeah. You know? And I would hope that coaches and, and and progression gurus are making it a very comfortable situation to ask to. And um, I'm not talking about you in particular, because I know, man, you talk, so I already know how, how, how you roll when it comes to things like that. But mm-hmm. that's for everybody else. So. Yeah. Well, Mike, is there anything else that you want to ask me before I let you go? Um... I know Skippy brought up your your hair the other day, but uh, yeah. I think I think you guys covered that. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't take me forty five minutes to an hour and fifteen mm-hmm. to do my hair. Nice little shine on that thing. Yeah, okay. uh, I, I see you shining. Before before I leave, I gotta get this all shaved off. I gotta you know come in with a nice clean shave. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Gotta look dapper. Gotta look dapper. Oh yeah. Now um, your wife is coming, right? Oh yeah, she's gonna be there. Good, good. And we're gonna be we're gonna be running the photo booth again for everybody. Yes. So. I am excited about that. I love that. Photo. That was dope. Yeah, <laughs> we got a, We got a little bit cooler setup this time too, so it'll be nice. Okay, looking forward to yeah. seeing what y'all got going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Question for you, Ashley. Um, and 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 all right. Try to be try to be unbiased. Like don't don't worry that that I'm here sitting right in front of you. I'm don't even just keep that from your mind. Okay. Which which of the four expansion teams do you think has the best shot of of having a winning record this season? So. And you know I, I love all you guys over there. I love Eddie. I love you. I especially love Hunter. Yeah, Hunter. Man. Yeah. It's it's amazing the hmm what you what you can accomplish here that you never knew that you were capable of. Um, people take their skills that they learn and they bring it here definitely, but when you can broadcast a game, when you can write an article and you've never had that experience before. Or where you can create a podcast or anything like that and, and and or cut highlights and you've never done that before, it gives the, the league added value. And I think that is what why people are so drawn to it. And that's uh-huh. why you want to do more for it. You know? Yeah. And that's all the questions you got from me, Mike. Now, I you know, it's funny because I'm, you 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 watch my show. You knew I was going to ask you this. You were supposed huh? to have a plethora of questions for me for me to answer, and you dropped the ball, Mike. I didn't drop the ball. Trust you me. Drop the ball. You, so so what you're telling me is this is going to be my only interview this season. I don't have any other visits, so I don't have to. I can just get everything out the way right now. You didn't want to take it eight months to come back. Uh, I, like I said, your math is wrong. I'm, I'm pretty sure your math is wrong. No, I mean, of course, of course, you're going to be back on, hopefully helping me um, host a show or two. I'm doing like a revolving kind of hosting. So sure, sure. if you want to be on, just let me know. Gosh. You know, and it'd be good to be back on with Bo Martin, too. I would love that. You too. I can't. You know, actually, that's that's a three hour show between both of y'all together. Cause <laughs> yeah. But Mike, thank you for stopping by, man. Thank you for, you know, letting us know how you felt about that whole situation. Um, thank you for representing your team, you know, 
that's you know the best as you can of course you're you gonna do well um the only thing i am kind of disappointed in is that i don't see no chips what chips at man you're supposed to have a bag of chips or something you're supposed to be snacking on so so keep in mind with access live i did it from different rooms all over the house right yeah i didn't really do that uh on on ride to glory ride to no. glory was chips yeah ride to glory was chips okay so what i get nothing you, you're you're gonna get this dude in this sweet jersey <laughs> I can't I can't blow all my shtick, you know, every time, every every day, you know. I gotta gotta save up. All I'm saying is everybody else get a special kind of mic, you know, the chip eating mic or the where in the world is Michael gonna be today. But I you get want, you. Stick would journey. be more reserved for being like a co host. That that's a co hosting thing. You, you gotta bring stick when you're co hosting. Okay. Well, now we're gonna have to talk about that off camera, but okay. <laughs> All right, man. But thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you at the convention and good luck this season. Don't forget my shout out. No, you don't get one. You don't no, get one. I, I, so I'll see that that'd be bad for you to throw it away because I was actually gonna give you the shout out and congratulate you on making the Hall of Fame. Oh, wait, I didn't make the Hall of Fame. Oh, you didn't make it? I swore you made it. Mm -hmm. Were you not the contributor that made it? Nope. Uh, but we are happy for the ones that did. Well, you know what? Uh, then it was a uh, it was a uh, one of these vote things where they had the computers put in the wrong votes. You know, that whole thing. So <laughs> they're gonna have to recount that shit. <laughs> Mike, <laughs> you know, and I, I appreciate it, man. They, you know, I. It'll happen when it's supposed to. All right, fine. You and me will go in at the same time. How's that? There you go. We can just go in there hand in hand, welcome together. Yeah. Hall of Famers. You'll do the speech and I'll edit it. How's that sound? Thank <laughs> Business as usual. All right. <laughs> but no, seriously, if you want to sing a song or if you want to recite a poem, you're more than welcome to do so. Well, I got no songs or no poems, but. Uh, you know, I did shut up. I did a shout out, but I will say, uh, in Canton, you got to be bold to wear the gold, baby. Ooh. Mm. Is that going to be a hashtag? That is our hashtag. Mm. Got to be bold to wear gold. Okay. Okay. So if I rock some gold, then that means I'm bold. That's you what better be bold to wear that gold. Okay. Right. You want to get that Hall of Fame gold? You gotta be bold. You gotta get out there, and you 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 been getting out there. <laughs> it's just rounding that corner and actually making it count. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, Mike, thank you, thank you for being here, and please come back and see me again very soon, very yeah. soon. Okay, we'll talk. All right, see you soon. But no, I get it. This, this, but like, what when? And this is the thing. So I've noticed this lately, because sometimes I'm I'm starting to record like as soon as people come on. Because sometimes we have moments where it's just funny, and I add those at the end. But if you're saying something, like I've had countless people tell me, "Hey, look, I see that you're recording, and that's fine. But if you can just leave this part out, because I don't want to get in trouble. I'm telling yeah. you this because I trust you, but." Like, I don't want people to know that. Okay, that's cool. I get it, you know. <laughs> Speaking of which, have you talked to Bo? Talked to him all the time. I saw this TikTok that he posted. Um, I guess different commercials that he's doing voiceovers for. Yeah, he's great at his job. Oh, yeah. my God. And it's crazy because each commercial had a different feel like you get that whole dramatic you must watch this kind of thing yeah. and then it's like this oh hey jovial kind of thing you know i'm like and it's amazing how he can just do that with his voice and give you those same feelings because i don't see your face but i can tell you're smiling oh yeah or i can tell you're serious you know yeah awesome. and my boy's got lots of range man lots of range. my daughter actually wants to do voiceovers yeah and she wants to do like um 
voice acting and stuff like that. So I'm supposed to be, I've been telling Bo, I've been trying to get with him to, to help us out with that. And he probably thinking like, you know, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need more competition. <laughs> no, nah, he good enough. There would be, there yeah. would be no competition. Yeah. As good as he is. A lot. What is, what's your nickname? Uh, for what? Oh, yeah. The, 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 the one given by Cam? Yeah. The Ramos Tradamos? Yeah, Ramos Tradamos, honey. And there he's you not go. far off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but Lex, the next time you do that, whenever you see the Arizona Scorpions and you want to do, you know, your um, your Nostradamus thing, make sure you will us to win. I, I would appreciate that, um, <laughs> that you see that, you know, with however you do your thing. Um, yeah. Just will us to win. I appreciate it. <laughs> there you go. I'll try. I'll try. Well, I'll try. But Eddie has to put a. He has to put in the work. He has to make me look good too. There you go. I, 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 I know. He will. he's a great coach. And indeed he is. Indeed yes. Is. Which of the four expansion teams do you think has the best shot of of having a winning record this season? Canton. And I'm not saying that because you're here. I promise you I'm not. It was between you and um, Indianapolis. Now, Axel, there's no shade that I want to throw to anybody else. Understand that. With Ethan, with Axel, with BJ, none of that. I'm not trying to throw shade. But I do pay attention to who... I pay attention to the rosters. I pay attention to... The camaraderie, I pay attention to who's out there and who's not. Um, and I really do. It's it's definitely, I give you guys a slight edge over Indianapolis. And that didn't, that wasn't even a thought process. I, I appreciate that. I, and and I'll, I'll, I'll answer it myself. Uh, I believe my team's going to do great things. However, Focusing on other teams, uh, I think Minnesota is going to do just as great. Mm -hmm. But but with the two big brains on Indianapolis, with with Adam and with Chad, that that yeah. coaching that coaching is going to be spectacular. Man, I'm telling you, because even with Chad, Chad's been my coach in other leagues too. And when I tell you, he know what he's doing. Even Mike and Mike Twinscrew and Chad both know what the hell they do. Yeah. And Chad has learned from some of the best in the league through TJ. You know, being a being a part of that crew over there, come on. Yeah. So that's why it's it's real close. But I have to give the edge to you guys. Yeah, we're 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 gonna do our best to to do our own thing, but emulate the success of of Baltimore as much as we can. Okay. Now I do. Well, now with me saying that, though. Okay. You know, I I don't want you guys to do better than AZ. I don't want you to have a better record. Than AZ in particular, because then that means I lose a bet, and I don't like to lose. Yeah, so, yeah I'm, I'm I'm aware of your bet. Right, so that's why I would I do wish you guys success, you know, mm -hmm. um, but not just better than Arizona, because I don't want to touch change my love. That's that's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I, I know it's it's going to be hard for you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you understand. Yeah. You and I have this understanding. We've been together for a long time. So. Yeah. But you said what? I said it happened to a former giant. You know, it's the pinky or index. Yeah. That's with them fireworks. And you got to be careful. If you don't know what you're doing. You really shouldn't be messing with them. That's why you're not going to see me out there going to a little fireworks stand, grabbing them. Talking about, oh, let me go out here and just light up. No. No, I've seen the things go a y. But you retired, so I, I'm okay. Did you retire? For me? Yeah. No. Is it quarterback this season? Yeah. Oh, I thought they said you was giving it up last week. That was, they was just check, they was kidding. Kidding? Mm -hmm. And I figured that was going to be the whole See, and I knew they was going to have people Believe in that crap Actually, actually I can't I can't believe how 
Okay, I have to stay professional. Okay, look, Ashley, look. Um, um, okay. We just start the show. Okay. We just start the show, but like doing incriminating questions, like like you just recorded me without me knowing. Gotcha. You heard that lady say, "Now recording." Yeah. You heard her. Yes. <laughs> so you do. <laughs> I hope you got good questions. You were just, I mean, just basically trying to figure out what your head says for us. So we're team Portland, what your thoughts are um, for the future of Portland, what you have been doing since the show last. It's been like, what, two, three years since you've been on? Mm. So, yeah, it's going to just, just, just catching up. But I've been doing that with a few people that I just haven't been, you know, I just haven't talked to for, you know, in a while. So, now, keep in mind that your camera is up really high. So, I'm only just seeing. I'm doing it. Yeah, that's my Wow, name. blown up picture. There you go. Wow, you, look, you look good, Ashley. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. You're welcome. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Five, four, three, two, one. Dad, that can come alive. They gon' tell you I'm a little out of drive. So I'm a little one to let you know.